Today on Fresno State Focus, a look at the Good Samaritan program created by President Castro. Plus, why ASI is rejecting Jesus. Hello and welcome to Fresno State Focus. I'm Lexi Godot. And I'm Jody Parkinson. A new program implemented by President Joseph Castro is helping students financially. Abigail Martin tells us more about the fund that aims to promote academic success, even through unexpected hardships. Many young adults struggle to pay bills while being full-time students. Fresno State student Amber Esquivel recently had to come up with $170 to foot the bill for a technical malfunction. What happened with the laptop, uh, the spam got into it and then it erased everything. So it was like a brand new laptop and then um, I had to get it fixed. To help students like Esquivel, Fresno State President Joseph Castro started a program called the Good Samaritan Fund. And we know that emergencies happen all the time. And what we wanted to make sure is that students who might um, experience some kind of emergency, that that didn't derail them from finishing their studies and eventually graduating. So we set up the Good Samaritan Fund as a way to help students who encounter those kinds of emergency and urgent sorts of needs. The Good Samaritan Fund receives money from private donors. Castro said it can cover anything from broken glasses to a new car engine. Before the Good Samaritan Fund, students had to wait months to receive money from the financial aid office. It was a long and tedious process. But now, students can receive awarding within a matter of a few days. Director of Financial Aid Bernie Ogden chairs the Good Samaritan Fund Committee. And we review the facts and the pertinent data, and we request information from the student if we need more detail, and then the three of us combine to uh, say yes or no. Esquivel says she appreciates the program. It will help out a lot of students. Students can download the application anytime online. Abigail Martin, Fresno State Focus. Fresno State has rejected a proposal supporting the building of Jesus statue in the Peace Garden on campus. Senators at large and students on campus have different opinions on this proposal. Marilyn Cowley has the story. Fresno State Peace Garden honors the lives and memories of four historic civil rights figures. Students at Fresno State want to add a fifth figure to the garden, a statue of Jesus of Nazareth. He was a peacemaker. He's called the King of Peace. They call this a peace garden. He's the, uh, you know, he's the greatest humanitarian. Um, he you know, taught in parables. He always taught people to love, love thy neighbor as yourself. There's nothing more peaceful as that. Um, you know, promoted equality. Right now, the Peace Garden has four civil rights figures, Martin Luther King Jr., Cesar Chavez, Mahatma Gandhi, and Jane Addams. All of these figures are people who represent peace and civil rights. Opponents of the Jesus statue say Jesus was more of a religious figure than a historic, and a Jesus statue would violate the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment that prohibits the endorsement of religion. Senator at large Anthony Farnesi opposed the Jesus statue. He says the name Jesus is associated with religion and a lot of students would not like that. It has an inherently religious connotation and whether we write Jesus of Nazareth in the resolution or Jesus Christ, it's going to come across with the same meaning. Whereas student Devon Brown says there should be a statue in the Peace Garden. Well, I think that would be a good idea. I mean, we don't have, we don't have one and you got all these famous people around and then Jesus is pretty famous. Student Nadia Pearl has mixed feelings about the statue. I don't agree that it should come just because um, it's got a religious connotation and the Peace Garden, as far as I know, all of these people, well, the figures that are in here aren't, you know, necessarily religious figures themselves, even though they might be to do with um, religious peace efforts, they're not actually religious figures themselves. As for now, the Jesus statue is not under discussion, unless O'Brien or another senator at large proposes the idea. The Peace Garden will remain with four historic but not religious statues. Marilyn Cowley, Fresno State Focus. Fresno State Associated Students Incorporated is in the middle of elections for the next term. Students can find the link to the ballot in their Fresno State email inbox. Current ASI President Moses Menchaca is running for re-election against sophomore J Jared Bartoni and graduate student Elizabeth De La Cruz. Students are also voting on various senator seats. Voting ends this Thursday. It is March 26, nearly three weeks since the disappearance of Malaysia Airlines Flight 370, and still no plane has been found. 
Three sets of satellite data of possible plane fragments, a once spotted wooden pallet, and a change in altitude are leads in the mystery. A professor in media ethics, Dr. Bradley Hart, is with us here today. Thank you for joining us today, Professor Hart. Sure, happy to be here. So can you tell us some of the latest updates you've heard about Flight 370? Well, the latest that we know is that they have spotted what appears to be a debris trail somewhere in the South Indian Ocean. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that this debris trail is in an area as large as California to New Mexico. So as one of the aviation experts I saw on the news this morning was saying, it's not a matter of finding a needle in a haystack. We haven't even found the haystack yet. So it appears that the radar readings that they have used to locate where the plane was have been successfully pinpointed to a general area, but it's still a huge area that needs to be searched and there's still no sign of any actual evidence. Okay, and so some of the leads also that are included in the story are military radar showings of an altitude of dropping to 12,000 feet. Um, there was a CNN aviation analyst, Miles O'Brien, who was quoted saying, we have no experience or evidence the crew did anything wrong and in fact now we should be operating with the primary assumption being that something bad happened to the plane shortly after they said goodnight. Do you think it's safe to be making assumptions right now? Not at all, right? This is the mistake that we've seen the media making over the past several weeks since this plane disappeared. Initially, there was concern that this plane had crashed in a whole another part of the world, effectively, thousands of miles from the current search area. That proved not to be the case. Then, of course, there was the inevitable speculation about terrorism or some sort of man-made disaster. The point is, we still don't know. We don't know what happened to this plane. It's believed that, that there are no survivors of this, but up until a few days ago, we didn't know that at all. So I think any kind of speculation here is really premature, and you could argue from a media ethics standpoint that when you talk about trying to implicate people in wrongdoing when there's no evidence that anything wrong has actually been done, they are abrogating your responsibilities as a journalist in that sense. That's true. And some other theories that have been happening um, on board the plane, there's like mechanical failure and hijacking and sabotage. Um, so do you think that uh, do you think that the media should be able to throw in all these theories? Is it confusing to add in all these theories when there's not many facts known? Absolutely. Well, the, the difference between theory and facts, right? Theories are ideas. Is there are theses that need to be borne out. The irresponsibility comes in when you're promoting a thesis that there is no evidence to support. So on CNN a few days ago, one of the anchors speculated on the air and asked a guest whether a small black hole might have been responsible for this. That's an absurd suggestion. Even a small black hole would swallow the entire solar system, as we know from physics. So, you know, you have the difference here between not knowing any facts and the media wanting to speculate to fill time, sell products, sell advertising, things of that sort. And we're seeing a classic media ethics dispute. What do you do when you simply don't know the facts in that sense? We're we're seeing a little bit of irresponsible speculation have over the past few days, but now hopefully we're going back to a more sort of nuanced um, brand of coverage. Thank you, Dr. Hart. Thank you. The search for the Boeing 777 with almost 240 passengers continues with an international effort in technologies. According to the Washington Post, NASA will aim its satellites at the search area within a few days. Our hearts go out to the passengers' families. Thank you for joining us and, and sharing your insight with us, Dr. Hart. Thank you for having mm -hmm. me. The Fresno State Analogy Society is held its annual Bud Break Bash, a wine-filled event that raises funds and awareness of Fresno State wine. The event took place at Fresno State Sportsman's Club and featured local wines and delicious food. Several alumni, as well as current students, attended the event and shared Fresno State spirit. Analogy Society present, President Drew Phillips he loves, said he loves using these events as a way to promote awareness for Fresno's various wines. Time and commitment. And what's, what I like about our club is we're like 10 people who put on a tasting, put on an event every week, every Thursday night at 7 o'clock for you know, up to 50 people. That's the fire. You're if you're interested in tasting these wines for yourself, swing by the Rue Gibson Market on Barstow and Chestnut. The Analogy Society hosts wine tasting every, every Thursday at 7 p.m. Coming up on Fresno State Focus, we'll take a look at the smoking controversy on campus. Plus, Derby Day's raising money for Children's Hospital. All that when we come back. I am and always will be. I 
Fresno State, and I'm going to show you why. Here's the beautiful and newly constructed Henry Madden Library, which has a massive collection. The Sadmar Center, which is our sports venue and one of the best attended in the entire country. We're absolute pioneers in the agricultural sciences, having led to the production of the first university winery and drawing in a diversity of students to achieve academic success over the past 100 years. And you know, I wish I had time to tell you about everything else, but in reality, I think you're just going to have to come see it for yourself. The controversial issue about smoking on campus still continues, with designated, with designated signs being relocated by people, the policies have become stricter on campus. According to the statistics, there has been an increase in smoke-free campuses and fewer people are smoking. The number of smoke-free campuses is increasing as less and less people are smoking in the United States and college students are having health concerns about secondhand smoke. As of January 2nd, 2014, there are 1,182 tobacco-free campuses in the United States. Fresno State still has designated smoking areas. Should Fresno State be a tobacco-free campus? Out of the 1,182 smoke-free campuses, 811 of them are 100% tobacco-free. Two of those campuses are our very own Fresno Pacific University and University of California Merced. I say smoking is bad, especially having it in campus, because um, when you're passing by, it kind of like gives you the secondhand smoke, you know? And like me especially, I try to hold in my breath, you know, when I'm passing by. Kind of hard to do that, you know, but I try my best, you know, I'm trying to stay healthy too, you know. Fresno State has 22 designated smoking sections on campus. And on the fresnostate.edu backslash smoking website, it shows the policies and the exact locations of each smoking section. But I'm not really from here, so I don't know what the culture is towards smoking exactly. Um, I've been to other college campuses where you can smoke anywhere you really want and uh, as long as you're respectful of where you put your cigarette butts. It is asked that you please smoke in designated smoking areas for the respect of others. Fresno State has 22 designated smoking areas throughout campus. Now talking about the smoking policies we have on campus is Lisa Kao. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. And can you tell us a little bit about the smoking policies that we do have? Sure. Uh, we have had a policy for designated smoking areas and, and being smoke-free otherwise since 2003. And so um, I think over the time, we've looked at the possibility of going into 100% smoke-free two times. We had a ad hoc committee put together by Dr. Welty in 2008 and in 2011 and both committees decided that we should just stay with what we were doing currently, and so that's where we are now. We have the 22 designated areas, and uh, smoking is not allowed outside of those areas on campus. And what were the reasons they said they wanted to keep, the, um, keep it the same? Well, there's a difficulty in, in enforcement piece. That's, that's the most difficult, I think. And even now, when we have 22 designated areas, we have difficulty in getting people to comply. And I think that the, the real um, opportunity for us is just to get the word out that we have this policy. And if people would just smoke in those designated areas, we won't have any conflict. And where can we find out where all the 22 designated smoking sections are? There is a website, and it's um, fresnostate.edu forward slash smoking. And then at every designated smoking site, there is going to be, there are brochures. And the brochures indicate what the policy is. There's a map inside, so you could find other designated areas. And then there's also, of course, information information about smoking cessation programs that are available. All right, thank you for joining us, Lisa Kao. Thank you. We've been talking with Fresno, State, with Fresno State's Health and Safety Manager, Lisa Kao. We enjoyed you being here with us. Thanks. One student takes the stage as he performs with his unique instrument. Alali Mercado has the full story. As Fresno State students head to the library to prepare for their midterms, Music major Andrew Hernandez prepares for his midterms a little differently. As a bass vocal performer for Fresno State's opera company, he will have to perform a solo recital singing some of the greatest opera songs at the Wahlberg Theater. A song cycle by Maurice Ravel 
the Don Quixote as a cine, and I'll be performing La Vendetta by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. With the recital being such a big event, Andrew Hernandez knew he had to bring his biggest supporters, his close family friends, and his parents. Oh, he's a great person. He turned out to be a fine young man. He's really wonderful places. Andrew's mother, Susan Hernandez, said she came to see one person today. The man of my dreams. Even though this is not Andrew's first solo performance, he says he can't help but feel nervous. However, he's ready to take the stage. <laughs> Ali Mercado, Fresno State Focus. Recently gathered to raise money for Children's Hospital Central California. Jillian Bertolucci has more on the event. The Fresno State Greek System gathered last week for three days of competition. Sigma Chi Fraternity hosted its annual fundraiser known as Derby Days. As the slogan says, it's for the kids. The fundraiser benefits Children's Hospital of Central California. Coordinator Zach Warden says this year the fraternity had a big goal. We had about $85,000 donated and we needed $15,000 to reach $100,000 this year. Um, we surpassed that by $7,000 more, so we actually had $107,000 donated to Valley Children's from Sigma Chi. Five sororities competed throughout the week in multiple events such as wall painting, a parade, skits, and a dance finale. Money is raised through advertisement sales and donations. The members of Kappa Kappa Gamma sorority raised over $8,200 for the hospital, the most in event history. Although it was a competition, member Kelsey Hickman says she enjoyed seeing the Greek system come together for a good cause. It's for a bigger cause than just winning. It's for the kids. So everyone comes together. We're all cheering each other on. Megan Ellie of Children's Hospital expressed her gratitude for the event and the Fresno State Greek system. She says the hospital looks forward to the Derby Days fundraiser every year. The brothers of Sigma Chi Fraternity say they are looking forward to writing the check for over $22,000 and finally surpassing that $100,000 mark to help patients right here at Children's Hospital. Jillian Bertolucci, Fresno State Focus. Downtown Fresno welcomed the California Classic Half Marathon earlier this year. Blanca Juarez was in the streets and tells us all about the event. People from all over came to participate in the California Classic Half Marathon. This event started outside of the Ch Chansey Park. Everyone gathered at NU and Broadway Street to begin the 13.1 mile run. First time volunteer Rosalinda Rosas, she decided to volunteer for this event after she ran the half marathon in San Francisco. It's just fun, so I wanted to uh, come and help and volunteer and see what I can you know, learn and gain from Fresno and then maybe next year hopefully do this, this marathon. Runners passed by some of Fresno's sites like City Hall and Tower District. As they passed by the sites, they were all cheered on by spectators and live bands. Volunteers were ready in every mile to greet and hand out water to the runners. One of the unique things about this marathon is that participants actually got to enjoy the view of the animals while they were running. Beaklin Sack McQueen participated in the race with her family. She says her most memorable moment was running past the animals. Um, I particularly remember running past the seals. Um, I remember seeing the flamingos. I was trying to pay attention to the animals while trying to breathe and run. <laughs> Volunteers at the finish line greeted all the runners. Audience and family members also cheered on the participants. They received event shirts, goodie bags, free massages, breakfast, free ice cream, and a custom finish medal. Blanca Juarez, Fresno State Focus. One of the highlights of the California Classic was the run through the zoo. If you didn't have time to enjoy it then, reporter Simone Rixey tells us about that special program that allows your children a free visit to the zoo next Wednesday. Coming up on your Focus Sports, how did the Fresno...
Cafe Zoo aside from the rest. Every first Wednesday of the month, this zoo, in partnership with Wells Fargo, offers free admission uh -oh. to children from ages 2 to 11 so they can experience animals in an engaging and educational environment. Heather Davis, marketing associate, tells us about this season at the zoo. We are, it's springtime, the weather's beautiful. Um, we, this is our busy time of year. We have lots of school groups coming in, lots of families out for a day. The weather is gorgeous, and our, our numbers have, been, have just been phenomenal. The program was designed for families and children who otherwise would not have the opportunity to visit the zoo. Hannah Paredes, an instructional assistant from Tulare County, tells us why this is important. I don't often get to see all the variety of animals, all the different breeds. With new exhibits like Sea Lion Cove and the up-and-coming African Adventure exhibit, it's hard to deny that Fresno Chaffee Zoo isn't a great place to spend your Wednesday afternoon. You can enjoy the first Wednesday of every month, Wells Fargo Wednesday, here at the Fresno Chaffee Zoo. The hours are from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. The zookeepers, the animals, and the staff hope to see you soon. You can find the zoo at 894 West Belmont Avenue. To plan your next visit to the zoo, visit FresnoChaffeeZoo.org. They assure you, you'll have a wild time. I'm Simone Rixey, Fresno State Focus. Coming up in your Focus Sports, how did the Fresno State men's basketball team do in the CBI quarterfinals? Stay tuned for Sports with Renee Santos. So you decided to go to Fresno State. Good for you. But you were too insecure to show Fresno State pride? That's a problem. Because you never bothered to show pride in your school, you are shunned by other students. Professors can smell the stench of impending failure on you and take no pity. Even the mass communication students agree you have no future. But all of this could have been avoided if you simply showed your pride for Fresno State. I am Fresno State. Fresno State pride. Show it or face the consequences. Welcome back to Fresno State Focus. Let's turn it over to Renee Santos for your Focus Sports update. Renee? Three young tough, tough athletes this weekend. The Bulldog youth experience brought kids ages 8 to 13 to Bulldog Stadium. The young clubs completed drills that tested their football skills in a fun way. Both boys and girls interacted with players and got the hands-on experience needed to learn what it takes to be a Bulldog. Coach Druder says it was a great time for kids to not only learn basic football fundamentals, but also get to know the team. We have so many football players in this community, especially at the, at the younger levels. Uh, we want to be able to teach them some, some basic football fundamentals, but more importantly, just let them have fun, get to know our guys. Divided into four groups, coaches and players spent minutes with each group teaching them how to tackle, run, and block players. The Bulldog Youth Experience was a free event. Only the first 100 kids to register were able to participate. 32 NFL scouts invaded Bulldog Stadium, all on the hunt for the best Fresno State football athletes. Pro Day featuring 12 former Bulldogs brought much attention to Jim Sweeney Field. Alongside local media, the NFL Network was present, covering not only the event, but also former Bulldog and current NFL prospect Derek Carr. Though Carr had an outstanding performance, he says he still has a lot to learn. Uh, you know, I'm going to be a leader and be myself. You know, I'm going to you know, rally guys around, but at the same time, I need to learn. And so I, you know, there's a fine line there, but I'll make sure you know, the vets know. I'm trying to learn from them. You know, I, you know, I'll get, you know, have to carry their pads and stuff, but uh, you know, I'm looking forward to it. Former dogs Dev Devontae Adams, Isaiah Burst, and Marcel Jensen say they were impressed with each other's performance. The 2014 NFL Draft is, fr is from May 8th to May 10th. First round is on May 8th, third round on May 9th, and ending with rounds 4 through 7 on May 10th. It's been seven years since the Bulldogs have played in a postseason game, and after their impressive win over Princeton Monday night, the Dogs now advance in the CBI semifinals. C Cesar Guerrero making some noise with the big three, and here he is again going down the court up the middle, and in goes the basket. Tyler Johnson drives up the ball and goes 
and the ball goes in. He ends the night with a high of 23 points. The dogs defeat the Princeton Tigers 72 to 56. Here's what coach. Here's what coach Rodney Terry had to say about their win. They hit us in the gut right off the bat, and uh, you know our guys had to respond. And I, I you know, we we had to answer the bell. And I, and I think for a better part of the second half of the year, uh, we've done that. Dogs continue their postseason journey. They host Old Dominion tonight in the CBI semifinals. Tip-off is at 7 p.m. The martial art of kendo has inspired one bulldog to not only practice the sport but try out and make Team USA. Here to tell us about his inspirational journey is Team USA kendo member Julian Williams. Thanks for joining us today, Williams. It's nice to be here, Renee. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about kendo and how you got involved. Um, when I was younger, I had I have two brothers, and we all wanted to do something that was a little different, and we want to get in touch with our Japanese side. So my mom found kendo in Fresno, and um, she she took us to one of our practices, and it was awesome. So we loved it. Ever since then, it's been 11 years strong, and we've been doing kendo ever since. So we do have some video of you practicing. Tell mm -hmm. us what it took to make Team USA. Um, it was a, a five-month elimination process, and about 40 people tried out. Um, five people made it after the first month, and then after that, four people quit, and I was the last one standing, so I made it. <laughs> How does it feel to be the first ever someone from the Central Valley to be on Team USA. How does that make you feel? Um, it's very rewarding because being from the Central Valley, it's very hard to get good training out here. So going out there, it's like a whole new level. And being from the Central Valley and being the first one from the Central Valley, is, it's, it's very rewarding because no one's done it before and I'm the first, so. What are those practices like? I know you do travel down to LA. What do you practice there with the team? Um, we practice tournament techniques, things to win, just, I mean, we want to beat Team Japan this, this time around because the U.S. has never won. Um, we go out on the beach at like 8 in the morning. We're going on six-mile runs on the beach, running upstairs. It's super rigorous, but um, it's fun at the same time, and it's worth it. I think, I think it'll be worth it in the long run. Well, thank you for talking with us, and I wish you the best of luck on your journey. Thank you, Renee. You can stay up to date with current Bulldog and Team USA Kendo member Julian Williams by following his journey on Twitter. That's your Focus Sports for this week. Now back to you guys. The Walk and Roll Foundation came to Fresno State in hopes of creating a movement among college students. Jasmine Lopez tells us more about the event. First thing I said was, I'm okay, but I just can't feel anything. It was a night of many inspirational testimonies with Walk in Rolls Foundation's first visit to Fresno State. The program raises awareness for spinal cord injuries through motivational speeches with topics like drunk driving, texting and driving, along with the talented wheelchair dance team. USU Productions coordinator Mandrid Benyandin reached out to the organization after watching the show Push Girls. This was a very unique event. I don't think any of our participants have been exposed to something like this. But it's also something that's very relatable. Miss Wheelchair California, Tiffany Hendrickson, is also a Fresno State alumna. She was proud and excited to come support her friends that perform. I think if this is the first time you've come to something like this, it, it's great to realize that even though we are disabled, we are capable. And, and life does go on after having a disability. And, you know, we're here to prove that. So. Co-founder Chelsea Hill wanted to continue her passion for dance after a traumatic car accident that left her paralyzed. This was important to her because she had been dancing since the age of three. Not giving up and keeping a forward mindset was inspirational to audience member Brianna Lucas. Tell them to keep on doing what they're doing, definitely, and to visit more colleges, because I think they said this was their first college visit, but I think other people our age can benefit from it. Due to the good turnout, the Walk and Roll Foundation will continue to visit other universities. Jasmine Lopez, Fresno State Focus. It's really inspiring how these people can actually fulfill their dreams and even though they have hardships. What do you guys think? I agree. I think the name of the foundation alone is clever. Not only that, I mean the strength it takes to do those types of things is pretty impressive. Definitely. It is. <laughs>
Next week on Fresno State Focus, a look into a local animal shelter. Plus, an interactive exhi exhibition about how books are being influenced by technology. Also, what students are doing to stay healthy. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week.